Council of Lakeshore and myself attended the meeting of the World Group of the Motor and Neuron Disease Association, Prasovich. We, like probably many of you, thought we knew about NMD, but it was a real eye opener to learn about this complex and cruel disease, mainly from sufferers. We soon learned that a national charter exists, and this has been adopted by some UK council. I believe that only 19 councils have done this so far, two are in Northern Ireland, and there are none in our region. It would therefore be great for us, or Wirral, to be one of the first in Ontario. I'm fortunate this evening to have with me Debbie Williams, who is an association visitor and a new contact for the Wirral and the NMD Association, and also Yvonne Williams, who has been a recent carer for an NMD sufferer. They are here to explain this all to you in a much more knowledgeable way than I could, and probably far more eloquently. Uh, they will also answer any questions from the chair for the committee. I'll hand you over to uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. thanks. Um, first of all, the expression of, of thanks to people who've already responded to our, our letters and our invitations. And we have had uh, uh, email support for a number of people, plus the three councillors who came to our social group to meet our people who are currently suffering from motor neurons disease. Um, is that uh, Royal Council adopt the charter in order to positively identify the people with NMD and the ones within this community. Now, how much you know about this disease um, when you've got any personal contact, or all you know is what we picked up from one of our, favorite, our famous ambassadors, Stephen Hawkins, many people that's the extent of their knowledge. But what, what motor neurons is really it's a fatal progressive disease that attacks the brain and spinal cord. Um, there's different forms of the illness, one of which Professor Hawkins has. It attacks the nerves that control movement, so muscles refuse to work. It leaves people locked in a failing body, unable to move, talk, and eventually breathe. Some people experience some uh, changes in thinking and behaviour, but most remain fully aware take a minute to actually try and imagine what that is like, <coughs> the ability to talk, and even to scratch, no, no, nothing at all. It's got no prejudice against race, gender, age and ethnicity, and affects people from, in all communities. Six people are diagnosed with it every day, and sadly six people lose their life to an ND every day. At any one time in the UK, there's 5,000 people with the condition, and there's between 20 and 25 on the wheel at any one time. <coughs> From diagnosis, you're given between two and five years, but sadly a third of people die within a year and more than half within two years. And this is the cruel bit, it's a very cruel illness, there is no cure. So while the much needed research is carried out to find a treatment and eventually a cure, we need to focus on the care that those receive, that those suffering will receive. And in a nutshell, this is the right care <coughs> in time. So the aspiration of the charter is, firstly, the right to an early diagnosis of information. Some people can wait up to two to three years to get a diagnosis. The right to access quality care for <coughs> children. The right to be treated as, as individuals and with dignity and respect, particularly if you are losing your voice or you have no use of your hands, the ability to communicate effectively is just diabolical. The right to maximise their quality of life, to, to live that life while they, they still have the opportunity to enjoy some aspects. And the carer, carers of people with NAD, have the right to be valued, respected, listened to, and well supported. We know about carers, but caring for a motor neurons disease and sufferers is a huge, huge, unrelenting challenge. So while the council is not responsible for everything outlined in the charter, they are a vital part of the jigsaw. Various decisions made by councils can have a significant impact regarding the services available people with NMD, such as social housing, adaptions, support for carers, and those families with their children involved. When services are provided in a time um, person-centred way, 
This has a huge impact on people living with the disease. My four years visiting people with this condition has allowed me to, to witness firsthand when this does and doesn't happen, and the effect on the confidence and well-being of all concerned. If the council were to adopt the charter and live the charter, it could provide positive, not only to people, it would prove positive not only to people with MND but other neurological conditions, but it would not as aggressive as MND. If we get it right for people with MND, we get it right for many other people. Finally, our aim is to help councils raise much needed awareness by establishing partnerships which will achieve some comfort and dignity for those living with MND. We hope to be able to form an ongoing relationship with the World Council to raise awareness and ensure the right care and support is available within the best timescales possible. We have excellent healthcare professionals. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank them for what they do to help MND patients who are facing this very cruel disease. So, we brought with us information, if there's anybody who wants particularly to, to find out more about the, um, the condition and what we're doing with this, um, with this charter. We are very keen to move on it in the North West. We are a very small charity in the world. We've been fighting a, a bull on our way for some time. And most of our energy is put in to supporting people on an individual basis, basis to get what they, they need and what they deserve. But if we did that in a more constructive way, sitting with you as a council, <coughs> I think that would strengthen what we do. And I ask you very sincerely, if I could only take you to meet some of those people this year, we to your lungs. It really is a, a heartbreaking condition. And we're all with you to have the better. So thank you for your time. And, okay. and can I thank both Steve and
a more tailored approach. I think that's the difference. I think with the recommendation, if, if you have a tailored recommendation, that's pretty a user. Sorry, I've got a recommendation. Um, Chrissy, thanks, Councillor Williams and Debbie Williams uh, for explaining the implications of motor urine disease charter, which is a standard of care which should be available to all who have long term health conditions and those who care for them. The committee requests that officers of the council work with colleagues in health to look at implementing the five principles of the charter and draw upon the experience of other councils who have already adopted the motor urine disease charter to help in this process. And I'm sure we'll be looking at this again and look to see what progress we've made over time. Is the committee happy to accept the report that? Thank you. Can I just check then, Chair? I wasn't sure from what you said whether that was not in adopting the charter at this point. No, I'm um, not. The next item on the agenda, item 4, and um, this is another notice of motion that's been referred to by the mayor. He's been busy, and um, keeping us busy. Um, and this is on the performance data presentation. And um, Councillor Phil Gilchrist is here. He's going to talk to us for a couple of minutes on this notice of motion. And again, we'll discuss this.
pages, those are fairly easy to find, whereas wills isn't as easy to find. When you flag up on our website, there's six or seven key things, and it's nice to see that the calling a child in at risk is higher when you first turn the website on. You need to go into more services and then find the right fit to see data. So what I'm suggesting is a way of actually making data accessible to vendors. There's no point in having it unless we're making some use of it. And I'm not saying that we should be collecting far more data than we are, because in fact, I understand there are lots of data collected that we don't see. There is a thing about corporate uh, performance, corporate health that goes to the senior leadership team, possibly to cabinet members, but look at how things are across a range of things, and they don't necessarily see that. So this was flagging up a request to have a productive process between now and whatever comes out in two or three months' time, so that all members are able to look at things <coughs> easily and to follow things to do, and perhaps look back over previous years, except in the problem of definitions, to see how things have or haven't changed over time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Phil. Um, do you want to move back and... Yes. Yeah. Um, two things I'd like to say. First of all, yes, we did have the, the training session on the performance stage, and I think what came out of that was that was a level of insecurity among us that we, we weren't convinced that we were getting to see the information we need to. And there was a variety of views of what, what we did need to see. Um, I think the meeting that we held between the spokespersons, the vice chairs and the chairs of the three security groups was helpful. And we put the data later on uh, on the agenda that to me does represent a significant improvement. It may not be exactly what we what we are looking for at this point. I take the point about a website which shows where we are um, in the information that's not going to be actually presented to the committee. Um, but I think the scope for working with the other three, the other two committees, again, um, not only on this issue, but on other issues, I think was a useful meeting. Um, I'm not sure what committee feel. I mean, I, I think that this is a notice motion we should be looking to support, um, and we should be looking to continue to have the meetings between the vice chairs, chairs and spokespersons. But if anybody <coughs> wants to comment,
federations will be represented off of the future group practices. We can work and we can keep the design the model and we're stepping, stepping forward potentially to build the service from 2017 through 18, subject to sort of pure two contracting processes we need to work through. Um, in terms of uh, wider benefits of chronic care system, there is a legacy IT system <coughs> which is system that is one of the uh, biggest benefits of the new service model is that we're getting a uh, system where pay, uh, providers will be access subjects so patients can send uh, their care record at any of these nine sites no matter what practice you're registered with. So practice will have fully informed consent by choosing to book into the service and giving consent to that permission uh, so that you couldn't have done it was going to be right. Charging, but uh, we, 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 
We know that a number die from long-term health conditions, probably exacerbated by their substance misuse. So for example, 15 died from respiratory-related illness, 7 got, died from cancers, and 14 from chronic liver disease. Five of the deaths were directly drug-related with four suicides. We do not have information yet from the coroner or from the health service on the remaining 17 cases. Wirral is an outlier in the numbers of people we have in treatment globally. The heroin epidemic of the 1980s led to the development of strong treatment services, which in turn has resulted in significant numbers of people being supported with their addiction for over 21 years. We also know that that group of people currently have an aging profile. The average age of somebody during the heroin epidemic was 19, 40 years on. There are two questions that I look to answer with this review. Firstly, to try and understand what causes of death were behind the figures that have been raised with you. And most importantly, is this a safe service for those who are in receipt of treatment? I have commented on the causes of death that have been listed in Appendix 1. It is worth noting that both alcohol and drugs can be contributory factors in poor health relating to respiratory, alcohol, liver, and heart disease. Service clients who develop these conditions are more vulnerable because their alcohol and substance misuse uh, sort of make the condition worse and are at higher risk of dying from these causes at an early age. The increase in the impact of alcohol is a concern this committee has recognised previously and continues to be a significant issue in our communities. Each death in service is reviewed by a change program. While the CQC has not yet published their report, the senior investigator was happy to confirm to me that they felt there was very good practice around this, and they felt learning for every death was identified and acted on. She was aware of the concerns that had been raised, and this formed part of their lines of inquiry. She is comfortable for me to share with the committee tonight that the CQC have no concerns about the ability of CGR to learn from incidents, to conduct investigation into incidents and death, and that they believe CGR have a very good safeguarding procedure and reporting process. This is critical. An organisation that is not willing to acknowledge that issues can arise in treating clients would be a significant concern. The lessons of the failures that have occurred in healthcare such as in Staffordshire and Northern Bay often reflect a lack of action and reaction to that. A particular area of practice that's been reviewed is the medications clients receive. On taking on the service, Change Global have carried out uh, over 2,300 medical reviews for clients. Generally speaking, the best practice guidance suggests that licensed treatment options are preferable to off licensed treatment. And what that means is that a drug is licensed for particular use and condition. It can, however, used for other conditions where there is good medical evidence for doing so, but it is not the reason why it is licensed, it is reports of clarification. As a result of that, um, some prescriptions have been changed to be given to service users. In doing that, however, they have considered the psychological effect that would have on someone who has been dependent on a particular medication for many years.
question means 